the middle of the kitchen renovation and we have reached the point where we can now do our backsplash tile. Sink is in, the countertops is in, the countertops is in. <laughs> the countertops are in. We chose white cabinets. Countertops are very light, the wall color is very light as well. So we're going to be installing this grayish kind of neutral tile to help break up the sea of white and provide some contrast. I know that tiling might seem like a pretty daunting job, but I promise you it's really easy. We're going to take you through the whole process from start to finish. Let's go! paper in place to protect our countertops. It can get pretty messy with the grout and the mastic and all that sort of stuff. But what we're going to do next is put in a ledger board. A ledger board is this piece right here and it bridges the gap between two structures so that your tile has somewhere to rest and doesn't slip off the wall. We're ready to start applying the tile. We're going to use our pre-mixed mastic using a B-notch trowel to put this on the wall. The secret is that you don't want to put more mastic on the wall than you can tile in a few minutes. There are a couple things that will make your job a little easier. One is we use a small trowel for tighter spaces. We back butter the tile. We put the mastic directly onto the tile and put it on the wall. Another thing you might notice is we're using 3 by 6 inch subway tile. Subway tile has a natural easement on the edges, and when you put the tile against one another, there's a very small space where grout can fit right in. We prefer the look of a very thin grout line, so we don't use spacers in this case. When you're ready to make your first cut at the end of your row, we find it's much easier to hold the tile in place, make a little mark with a marker, and cut it there instead of trying to measure. wet saw to cut our tile. If you've never used one before, the way that it works, there's a bath of water at the bottom and a small pump that pumps water up through a hose and sprays a diamond tip blade, which actually grinds away the tile. So you put your tile on the tray, hold it really steady, and then slide the tray through the blade, which is fixed. If you're in a position, like under a windowsill, for example, where you need to make a bunch of the exact same cut, most wet saws will come with a right angle stop that you can adjust side to side. So I've already made two here, I need to make a third, so essentially I left my stop in place and this is gonna repeat my cut exactly. When you get to the cuts around outlets, junction boxes, window ledges, things like that, you can end up with cuts where you need to make two cuts on one piece of tile. So what I like to do is we've already put this one in place here, so I've marked a line that's the same height as the other piece. I'll come over here, slide the tile into place, gently maneuvering around the wires, and make a mark right here where I want to cut, and then I'll scribe the mark down and remove the part with the X.
subway tile in a running bond pattern, which is what we're using here where they overlap each other half. Tiny little torpedo level always comes in handy. And you want to just throw that up against one of your seams, skip patterns, make sure you're level, and just make sure that your seams line up top and bottom. tile is all installed. It goes about a third of the way up the wall, but we still have a raw edge at the top. So this is where pencil tile is going to come in. It gets applied the same way, just a little bit of mastic, and it sits right at the top edge of the tile, finishing it off. The next day we've allowed our grout the grail grouting tile grail. <laughs> it's the next day we have allowed our tile to set properly based on the instructions of the mastic that we use and now we're ready to grout. So for grout you're gonna need a few things and you need to work quickly as well. So we chose a pre-mixed grout which makes the job just a little bit easier. We'll use the grout with a float, buckets sponges, and a whole lot of water. And the closer you can be to your water source, the better, because it takes a lot. Fill your flow with grout, run it over the tiles, making sure that the grout fills every crack. Using a clean, damp sponge, swipe over the grout, turn the sponge over, and swipe it again. Making sure that the sponge is clean is very important don't want the grout to dry on top of the tile. When you think you're done wiping your grout with your sponges, you're not. You need to wipe at least one or two more times to eliminate grout haze because it's much easier to get it clean now than it is to do it later. After your final sponge, a trick that we've learned is to use a paper towel, wipe over each one of those individual tiles where you see some haze, it'll lift right off. The final step in completing the look of the tile is to fill the space where the tile meets the countertop, the trim, or a wall. For this, we're using a tube of cloth that is color matched to the grout that we've used. 